Hello everyone and welcome to Mountain Lake Journal. I'm Tom Halleck. This week's cover story, the state seals the deal on the largest land purchase in the Adirondacks in more than a century. You need to preserve the park because it's the right thing to do morally as a citizen. Governor Cuomo announced in May the state was buying 20,000 acres of lakes and forest lands that make up the Boreas Ponds Track, the final piece of the former Finch Paper Timberlands the state purchased from the Nature Conservancy. Now the state will have to decide what kind of access and recreation should be allowed. North Hudson Supervisor Ron Moore says he and other neighboring towns hope the ponds and the logging roads and trails around them will be open not only to hikers, but also mountain bikes, horseback riders, and in the winter, snowmobiles. The governor's put a lot of emphasis on tourism and using tourism to boost the economy for our local towns and villages, and we think that uh, our plan will help that. Um, it's going to bring people in, not just in the summertime for hiking, but in the wintertime for snowmobiling, horseback riding in the summertime. So you get a lot of people coming into town. Hopefully, we're going to benefit from that. Uh, whereas if, 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 for example, it was wilderness, you can't even ride a bicycle in wilderness. Uh, so you start to limit the numbers of people that are actually going to come in and, and utilize the property, which isn't going to help us economically. But several environmental groups want to protect much of the land around the Boreas Ponds and limit recreation, banning motorized boats and snowmobiles and keeping all traffic, even mountain bikes, at least a mile away. And those ponds are very sensitive. They have loons, sensitive wildlife habitat, also um, fisheries. And protecting it as wilderness keeps out motorized, mechanized recreation and ensures the protection of the resource comes first. Ask Governor Cuomo to protect our Adirondack legacy now. Actress Sigourney Weaver has voiced an ad urging the governor to back the coalition's call to set aside 30,000 acres, including a big chunk of the Boreas Ponds track, as wilderness. The Adirondack Park Agency will begin holding hearings in November on how to classify the lands. Joining us now to talk more about this is Willie Janeway, the executive director of the Adirondack Council. Welcome, nice wow. to have you here. You're welcome. You. Hearings will get underway this fall to decide how the state should manage those 21,000 acres around the Boreas Ponds. Your organization, along with uh, several other environmental organizations, want to see the majority of that land designated wilderness. Yes, we do. We and other national and Adirondack groups are looking at this national treasure property in the heart of the Adirondacks. There's actually several parcels of land that fit into the southern edge of the Adirondack High Peaks Wilderness Area, like missing jigsaw puzzle pieces. And based on the science of those tracks, we're making recommendations for additions of some parts of them to wilderness. And it, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to create 280,000 acres of contiguous wilderness, protecting the boreas ponds, the highest mountains, steepest slopes, loon habitat, and at the same time, open access to lands that have been closed to the public for over 150 years. And on top of all that, economic studies have found that if we expand the High Peaks wilderness, wilderness has an economic premium for the communities that host it, that serve as the gateway. So there can be an environmental win plus a benefit for the local communities. The Boreas Ponds track is, yes. the, is the gem that, that was is the gem. part of the, the, heart of it. the yes. purchase from the Nature Conservancy. Would the majority of that property be designated wilderness if, if you the folks get Council way. and the other groups working as part of a Be Wild New York coalition are recommending that most of that, the most sensitive parts, be made wilderness. There's a seven mile old stony access road and we're recommending six of those seven miles be kept open to provide reasonable access but to make sure the access stops a mile short to protect those special ponds from invasive species, motorized use impacts. And as you get into that last mile and around the, the Boreas Ponds, yes. what sort of limits and restrictions would there be on access and recreation? Essentially no motorized and mechanized use, but you could still go in, paddle on those waters, hike, fish, camp. There could be some horseback riding if it's designed and done in the right places. But the non-wilderness uses, motorized, mechanized uses, those would be on other lands, still the majority of Adirondack Park state lands that are not wilderness. Right now you can ride bikes around there, but... Right now under an interim plan, the state has opened up the Boreas Track this fall. The hope is to have the classification decision done well in advance of next summer 
so the management can be adjusted to reflect that decision. And I know some town leaders would like to have horse-drawn carriages and bikes, maybe even snowmobiles, but you don't agree with that. There are advocates for motorized use of this property that do propose having more snowmobile use right into the remote interior, driving right to having motorized use on the lakes all the way around the lakes in some of the areas we consider very sensitive. And we oppose that. We think that would be a big mistake environmentally and economically. It would spoil what's so special about that property. There are a few of my friends who think that also the wilderness should be a lot bigger than we propose it and suggest closing the road seven miles away from Boreas Ponds. We've looked at the resource and we suggest allowing the public access in on part of the Gulf Brook Road, but not all the way, stopping it at least a mile short of the Boreas Ponds to protect those ponds for future generations. What is it that's so special about this tract? It has everything. It has this jaw-dropping view of Marcy, the highest mountain in New York, the biggest high peaks. It's water, it's a series of three ponds interconnected that can support up to three pairs of nesting loons. There's trout in those ponds. It's just endless, unbroken forest. It is a property with incredible history of being protected. And now for the first time it is owned by the state, but the state will have to make a decision, wilderness or not. When you look at it from 10,000 feet, when you fly over it at a few hundred feet, you see how well it fits in like a missing jigsaw puzzle piece to the rest of the High Peaks wilderness. You see how it connects, what's so special about it, how it connects the High Peaks wilderness to the Dix Mountain wilderness, creating 280,000 acres. That's twice the size of Zion. That's the size of Rocky Mountain National Park. That is the biggest protected wilderness we would have anywhere in the east north of Florida. So no surprise, wilderness is one of the key proposals in yeah. your State of the Park for 2016. Every year you put out uh, a report uh, on what you see as the major issues in the park. It's sort of a scorecard on how the governor, lawmakers, and community leaders are, are doing overseeing the park as well as the council's goals and priorities. In this year's report, one of the big priorities you say is adding more wilderness. You say the Adirondacks are ready for the largest expansion of motor-free wilderness in a generation and that Governor Cuomo has a historic opportunity to expand New York's most popular wilderness area to the size that would rival some of the greatest national parks out west, as you just mentioned. We've been putting out this report, Tom, that you mentioned for 30 years now on the state of the Adirondack Park. We look at things that have happened over the last year by government. We give them thumbs up if they're good. We give them a thumbs down if they're bad. And the report grades, as you've seen, dozens and dozens, hundreds of different actions, thumbs up, thumbs down. But we don't just grade what happened in the last year, we look to the future. And that's where, to your point, when we look to the future, the most significant thing we see is this opportunity for this historic expansion of wilderness. And we're so excited about what that can do. And is all of this already state-owned land, or are you advocating for the governor to look into buying more it land? It is all state-owned. It has been acquired just in the last few years, in the last few months. And the next part of the legal process is for the state to decide whether to protect it as wilderness or whether to not give it the wilderness protection. The governor has been very supportive of uh, proposals in the Adirondacks. Do you see this as one that he'll embrace? He's been a big booster of the Adirondacks. I think he will boost, uh, be a booster of supporting Adirondack wilderness. The question is how much. He and everyone is talking about balance, but some people have different opinions of what balance exactly means. And where the governor will come down on this, I do not know. We are hopeful that he will see the vision and want to be owner of a legacy that expands the wilderness and truly protects the Boreas Ponds, including the full mile to the south. So in your State of the Park report, what are some of the things you, you cite as progress in the past year? Oh, some of the big thumb up, thumbs up items are for the Pro Adirondack budget that was approved back in March before the new state fiscal year started in April. 300 million environmental protection fund. The governor proposed, the legislature approved a lot of success within that budget, more money for communities, for smart growth grants. 12 million, a doubling, more than a doubling of money to combat invasive species. So big thumbs up for that budget and for the invasive species money. Another big thumbs up, a new pot of money created a year ago for grants to communities from Plattsburgh to Watertown to Lake Placid, Saranac Lake for clean water, drinking water infrastructure. There have been loans available in the past, but not actual grants. And now we have close to 400 million available over this three year period, and it will run out at the end of next year. So it's going back a year this year and next year. And after that, it runs out. So a big thumbs up for that grant funding for clean water infrastructure. 
It helps protect clean water and it helps communities too. When it comes to the environment, what about the continuing fight against acid rain and the effects of climate change? There's been great progress on acid rain, but we're not done even though many might want to check it off. So many lakes are recovering, fish are coming back, loons are coming back. Those are great success stories, but we're still not all the way there. There still are dead lakes in the Adirondacks and further progress is going to be a part of progress combating climate change. As we address the pollutants that contribute to climate change, that helps us also complete the battle on acid rain. What are some of the setbacks of 2016? We've been disappointed that while there's been more funding for some programs, there's been nothing done to really restore the capacity and infrastructure in the agencies, in the Department of Environmental Conservation, or DEC, the Adirondack Park Agency. Staff were cut 20, 25, 30 percent in some places. And those staff agency cuts are now coming back to haunt us as we don't have the level of outreach and work helping communities with clean water issues. And we've been asking for, the funding is there, there is a need to restore some of that agency capacity. We were very disappointed last year that that was not done. Oil trains have been a big issue. That was another disappointment. It thumbs was. down that a lot of talk and some modest actions, but really no change on what's been happening. And a thumbs down for federal and state government not getting together and being more aggressive to combat the threat of oil trains. So what are the priorities for 2017? as you look ahead. Seizing the opportunity to protect the boreas ponds as wilderness, making this historic 280,000 acres of contiguous wilderness, that is on the top of the list. We've been really concerned about expanding use of road salt since 1980, an estimated six million tons of road salt have been spread within the six million acre Adirondack Park. We can have safe roads and have clean water. It's not a choice and there are alternatives that can be used. So we're looking for that to be addressed. So the land acquisition, the agency staffing, the clean water, the road salt, some reforms at the park agency, which still has 1970s era rules and regulations. Those are some of the many recommendations that we have. One of those decisions by the APA, we'll ask you about that, was uh, going along with the DEC and the DOT and their plan to look at the state-owned rail corridor that uh, runs Remsen from- to Lake Placid. Right, yeah. exactly. And taking the 34-mile section of track between Tupper Lake and Lake Placid, pulling up that track and creating a multi-use recreation trail. The governor's endorsed that, the DEC, the DOT, mm -hmm. they're moving forward with plans beginning next summer to go ahead and start removing that track. But has the Adirondack Council taken a position on this? We have. In the Adirondacks, people often think that local government and environment are on opposite sides of anything. But the supervisor from Tupper Lake and I represent the Adirondack Council are actually on the same page on this, that this corridor was getting so little maintenance, was falling into worse and worse repair, was being abused, was being used for illegal trespass and access, motorized use onto both private lands and of state lands, that the lack of something happening on this corridor was a huge concern. And the council said we would support reinvesting and having the rail work, we'd support it being a recreational trail, but the worst thing would be for the corridor to continue to deteriorate. And so the compromise that was adopted, Tupper Lake is really the winner and the Adirondacks win too. The state is committing to investing millions of dollars into upgrading the rail service up to Tupper Lake and making an investment in a recreational trail from Tupper Lake to Lake Placid. That allows both sides to have a significant part of a victory. And I hope the advocates on both sides see that and embrace that rather than both trying to fight and hold out for it all being one way or the other and having a continued stalemate, in which case nobody wins. Willie Janeway, thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us. We appreciate it. Tom, you're welcome. Thank you.